Welcome to another SV Lynx video. Today we're going to talk about how we chose between a catamaran and a monohull for our trip around the world. And boy, was that a difficult choice because there are great things about monohulls and catamarans and we had to choose. So what we did is we looked up all the things that are good about both a catamaran or a monohull and made two lists of those things. Turns out to be about 15 on each list. And then what we did is we put a value on each one that is what we think how important that item is. And so I created a whole spreadsheet of this and it calculates out the end of which is better for you, a monohull or a catamaran, all based on your own opinions of each of the things that are good about both types of boat. And we're gonna give you that calculator at the end of the video so that you can run it through, put your own values in and see which one is best for your needs. And I'd be happy to take a look at that if you want to post in the comments about what your choices came out. But for now, let's get on to the top 15 items that are good about each boat. And we'll go through each one and explain it before we show you our values for each of those in the spreadsheet. All right? Sounds good. Number one, a monohull can carry more weight, which means more load carrying capacity due to their displacement hull. And number two, if they happen to get knocked down, a monohull can recover because it has a large keel and that heavy weight can bring the boat right back up again. So on we go to the next place. Number three, it costs less to put a monohull into a berth due to their slimmer width. And with a monohull, you get weather feedback. That means as you sail, the wind blows and the boat heels over. And the amount of heel will let the skipper know just how much wind there is on the sail. And that'll tell them when they need to reef. So that's a big advantage. Number five on the list for monohull is it's a much smoother ride with less acceleration and deceleration from waves and wind. And for number six is a big one. They just cost less, and I mean a lot less. So if you're trying to buy one on any kind of a budget, used or such, you can find monohulls because they've been around for a very long time and there are inexpensive used ones or really expensive new ones, but you can find them at lesser price where catamarans seem to be much more in demand right now and there's just fewer of them out there so that drives the price much higher. And of course they start at a higher price for the same length of boat because it's a technically a larger boat. All right, on we go and we'll get to the next items. All right, for number seven, monoholes are capable of pointing closer to the wind, and that lets them steer a straighter course on their way to their destination. Number eight, it's easier to find a haul-out facility for a monohull as their beam is more narrow. Yep, on we go. All right. For number nine on the monohull list, let's talk about tacking. It's a lot easier to get a single hull through the wind without stalling when you're sailing a monohull. So that's a great option. Now, number 10 is that anchor. You don't swing as much back and forth in the wind simply because again, you have that single hull and therefore the wind isn't catching as much to make you swing back and forth. So those are both nice features for a monohull. Oh, and number 11, there are typically less maintenance costs with a monohull because there are less systems on board. Absolutely. All right, on we go. Number 12, on a monohull, there's no bridge deck slamming because there's only one hull. And 
those holes are kind of low down, which means there's less windage. And that's really helpful in a lot of ways because when you're going to the wind, you have less drag. And when you're in a marina, there's less of the wind catching the side of your boat and blowing you off course. So it's a big advantage. All right, we're down to number 14 on the monohull list. And with a monohull, being smaller, it's much easier to find a berth in any of the marinas because marinas were designed for monohulls originally. So that just makes it easier. And number 15, some people feel that a monohull is more beautiful. But again, that is really an aesthetic choice and you'll have to decide for you whether that's true or not. And that brings us to the end of our monohull list. So next up, we're going to take a look at the top 15 reasons you might want a catamaran. So let's go do that. All right, now we're gonna go on to the catamaran list and look at our 15 items. So number one for a catamaran would be less healing. And that's a big deal because when you're out sailing, you really don't want to be on an angle. That's the floor, your bed, tables, when you're cooking, everything. And with a catamaran, you only have about a maximum of a five degree of heel. And so it's a really much more comfortable thing. Number two on the list for catamarans is that when you're at anchor, there's less rolling due to the wide hulls. It's true. And we also have a lot more storage space on a catamaran, so that's our number three item. And it's wonderful because there's so much storage that you can put all of your different stuff. Of course, you don't want to overload it, so you have to watch out for the weight, but at least you have the room to put lots of things. So on we go, and we'll get to the next items. Number four, on a catamaran, the salon is up high, so there's a beautiful view out all of the windows. And number five is a really a big one, speed. Typically, catamarans are faster than monohulls, and that gives you some advantages because you're out on a passage less time, you're less exposed to weather. And another big advantage of, of the speed is, particularly on a performance cat, is you can sail in lighter winds, and therefore, you're out on the ocean when the ocean's calmer. So it's a big deal being able to go faster, and it doesn't always mean more speed in the sense of going 20 knots or something. It's more like you can sail five knots in five knots of wind, and that's a big advantage. All right, for number six on the catamaran list, is a shallower draft. And that's important when you go into an anchorage because often there are a lot of boats there and many of them have deeper keels. So with a catamaran, you can go in shallow and find a place to anchor. It's also nice when you're going into an atoll because there can be a cut in the reef that you need to get in. And when your boat's shallower, you can get in more often. And number seven, with a catamaran, they're usually easier to board as there is a sugar scoop in the back. And for number eight, catamarans are more fuel efficient. And that means that you can just save a lot of fuel because the cat is up on top of the water more, not a displacement hole. And so it takes a lot less to push that boat through the water. And therefore you can save a lot of fuel. All right, on we go. Number nine on the list for catamarans is there's more social area for people to congregate, such as the salon, the cockpit, the helm, and out on the trampoline. And for number 10, catamarans are unsinkable. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of the Titanic, and they said that was unsinkable. But a well-designed catamaran is buoyant. It doesn't have a keel to drag it down. So even if it flips over, it's likely to float and you can still access your food and water stores until you get rescued. So it's a very safe platform.
Number 11. The trampolines on the front of a catamaran is a great place to go to relax and watch dolphins. Absolutely. And another thing we like about catamarans is they have redundant systems, and that is a big safety factor. For example, you have two rudders in case you lose one, or two motors so that you can keep going even if one isn't starting. So that's a great thing. And that brings up number 13, which kind of ties into that, which is when you have two motors, you have excellent maneuverability. You can even spin that catamaran around right on its axis. So that's a wonderful feature about catamarans. All right, we're getting towards the end of the list now. So on that catamaran list, we also have dinghy access. On most catamarans, it's just a little easier getting access to your dinghy, both taking it on and off the boat and just pulling it up to the sugar scoops to get on and off as well. So a little bit easier. And number 15 on the catamaran list is some people think they look better. Yeah, well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder in that case. All right, so that's our list of 15 items for a catamaran. So next, we're going to talk about what we chose. All right, so now that we've finished the two lists for the Monholes and Catamarans, it's time for us to take a look at how we're using your evaluation of each one to make a decision. So what we did is we put a value that you can assign for each of the items on the list. So let me show you how that works. Now you're looking at the sheet that has the 15 monohole and the 15 catamaran lists. If you click on this box with your cursor, a little drop down list will appear with three available choices. Choose crucial if you think this item on your list is something that you really want. Choose prefer if you would like this but it is not as important as the crucial choices. And finally, choose negligible if this is not very important to you. Then just go down the list and value each choice by how important each one is to you. As you value these choices, the spreadsheet formulas will keep updating, but just go ahead and value each of the 15 monohull and catamaran features. Once you have selected a choice for all of them, at the bottom of the sheet, down here, it will show you a point total and which type of boat you are leaning toward. If you want, you may put that value into the comment section of our video and we can compare yours against other results. Speaking of results, it's time to take a look at what we chose. So we're going to go over each of these items and tell you why we valued them the way we did. Starting with number one on the monohull list, we want good load carrying capacity, but we think we can get enough with a big enough cat, so we'll just go with preferred. And for number two, we think that recovering from a knockdown is a crucial feature. And we think that a monohull being less expensive to dock in a marina is crucial. However, weather feedback isn't a big deal to us as we feel we can reef the boat based on the wind instruments just as well, so we put negligible. Now, when it comes to a jerkier ride, we think the motion of any of these boats is something you will get used to. So we only put prefer for this feature. Less expensive to purchase a used boat? Well, if we were looking for a used boat, this would be crucial. On better pointing, we put this as preferred simply because we can also go with the performance cat and get about the same pointing ability. Having an easier time finding a haul out facility, well, that's crucial. When it comes to easier tacking, we consider that negligible simply because we plan to go with an electric hybrid, so we can always goose the boat through a turn if needed without having to warm up a diesel. Swinging at anchor would be nice, but not critical, so we will go with preferred. However, less maintenance helps the wallet. So that's crucial. As for no bridge deck slamming, that would be really nice, but a well-designed cat will not do this often, so we'll go with preferred for this. For less windage, that would be great, especially in a marina where getting pushed around by the wind can be an issue, but we just prefer this item. Having an easier time to find a spot to park the boat, well, that's crucial. And finally, as for monoholes looking better, we don't care about that nor do we agree that either type of boat looks better than the other, so that is negligible. Now on to the catamaran list. Less healing means a safer, more comfortable sailing experience, so that's crucial. Less rolling at anchor is a very big one for us to help the crew avoid seasickness, so that's also crucial. More storage space 
is also crucial because we are circumnavigating, so we need a lot of food and clothing for the many different types of seasons, plus all our sports equipment, etc. A better view from the interior. Well, I'd like to put crucial for this because it's very important to us, but I'll just go with preferred. But speed is another safety and comfort factor. We are less exposed and have shorter passages, so that's crucial. We prefer a shallow draft and ease of boarding. However, more fuel efficiency is crucial. With our larger crew, we perform more social areas. The next one is crucial to us. The cat we build will be unsinkable, so that's a big safety factor. We can stay with the boat if it ever has a major issue, like hitting a sleeping whale, a half-submerged shipping container, or the cat just gets flipped over. Now, the trampolines are nice, but we'll go with a negligible advantage. As for redundant systems, like engines and rudders, that is crucial. We prefer the good maneuverability of cats with two widely spaced props and the better dinging access. As for them being more beautiful, again, that's unimportant to us, so negligible. But in the end, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll also see that we ended up choosing a catamaran. And your choice could come out quite differently, though, just because you may value each of these differently than us. And just so you know, I come from monohulls mostly, and I've barely sailed catamarans. My last boat was a Hobie 18, as I've mentioned before. But prior to that, all of my boats have been monohulls. And so it was interesting for me to fill out this list because I like a lot of those things on the monohull side. But in the end, it really showed that a catamaran is what we want for sailing around the world at this point in our life. So I will link down below the spreadsheet so that you can download it and you can fill in your own values and see. Then in the comments below, please tell us which way yours came out. I'd be interested to see. You can quote the two number totals at the bottom and see uh, whether you liked a catamaran or a motorhole better. There really is no bad choice here. It's just different for each person. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon. That will help us greatly and it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but it really uh, helps us build our channel and we're trying to do that. So thanks again and we'll see you in the next video. And what that next video is going to be about is that we're going to talk about, now that we know we wanted a catamaran, which catamaran, which builder of the catamarans, which brand, which model, how did we choose it, all of that stuff in the next video. See you then.